Its lustreless eyes, which seemed half decomposed in black cavities, stared into mine. The horrible smell, which had before offended my nostrils, only a hundred times more intensified, came up into my face, filling me with a deadly nausea. It was the smell of a decomposing corpse. My friends, who are cleverer about the occult things, say it was an elemental. Lep Castle has long been regarded as one of Ireland's most notoriously haunted destinations. Located in Colderry, County of Foley, Ireland, this historical structure has garnished worldwide attention and has been featured on a number of television shows catering to an audience with a fascination for the supernatural, including Ghost Hunters and TV's Most Haunted. But what is the history behind this infamous castle, and what is at the root of its sinister reputation. The dates related to the construction of Love Castle are a bit ambiguous. Some say the castle was erected in the 12th century, while others claim it came to exist in the 15th century. Whatever the timing of its origin, Lep Castle was built over an existing site previously occupied by Druids who used the property for initiation ceremonies, which leads to the origin of its name and calamitous circumstances surrounding it. One of the most notorious spirits of Lep Castle is that of the Red Lady, a very tall specter clothed in a fluttering red gown clinging to a sharp blade. The story behind the Red Lady is that she was imprisoned by the O'Carrolls and repeatedly raped. She gave birth to a baby who was then murdered by the O'Carrolls. Overwhelmed with grief over the loss of her child, the Red Lady used the knife, her phantom bears, to put an end to the life of her torment. In the 1900s, an oubliette was discovered behind a wall in the chapel that contained human skeletons amassed on wooden spikes. So many, in fact, that it would take three cartloads to remove all of them. It is believed that the sadistic O'Carrolls would drop unsuspecting guests through the trapdoor to be impaled by spears eight feet below. In the 1600s, the castle switched ownership. It was not a peaceful passing along of the ownership torch, however. As the story goes, the daughter of the reigning O'Carroll chieftain became smitten with an English prisoner in one of the castle's dungeons, a Captain Darby. The O'Carroll daughter would regularly sneak food down to Darby and the two concocted plans to elope. Late one night, she snuck down to the dungeons, freed Darby, and the two began their grand escape from Lep Castle. Their getaway was cut short, however, when they ran into the girl's brother on the stairwell. The two commenced in a sword fight where Darby emerged the victor. Upon the death of the O'Carroll's son, the daughter became heiress to the castle. The newly married Darbys took over the castle to start their own family and invested in expansions and renovations. Captain Darby was a bit temperamental and became known as the Wild Captain. He had amassed his own treasures in a battle which he hid in compartments scattered throughout the property. The Wild Captain was later imprisoned for treason in Dublin, but was later allowed to return to Lep Castle. Years of imprisonment had driven the wild captain to the brink of madness, and when he was unable to recall where he had hidden his fortune, as the legend goes, it still remains in Lep Castle and on certain evenings where the energies favor the spirits, you can see the phantom of the wild captain searching the grounds for his lost treasure. Now Mildred Darby one of the captain's ancestors was a gothic novelist who regularly performed seances within the walls of the castle. It was Mildred Darby's supernatural practices that awakened an elemental presence of an incredibly dark magnitude. Just what this elemental presence is manifested from is anybody's guess. Some say that the elemental was put there by the druids even before Lep Castle was ever even built in order to protect it, while others say it's the spirit of one of the O'Carrolls who died of leprosy. Mildred Darby claims to have seen this evil up close and described it as a thin, gaunt, and shadowy, and emitting the smell of a rotting corpse. The Darbys abandoned Lep Castle in 1922 
At that time, Ireland was fighting for its independence from England, and given the Darbys were an English family, Lepcastle was a prime target for revolt. Shortly after the Darby's departure, the castle was bombed and looted by the IRA, who hung peacocks for meat hooks along the tower. A friend of the Darby's lived in the castle briefly until she was ravaged by gangrene. And from then on, Lep Castle lay dormant until it was purchased in the 70s by an Australian historian, Peter Bartlett. The Ryans have been plagued with freak accidents since living in Lep Castle. One resulted in a broken kneecap that delayed restoration. Once the renovation resumed, another accident left Ryan with a broken ankle. The castle's malevolent history and creepy inhabitants didn't stop the Ryans from conducting their newborn baby's christening in the haunted bloody chapel. This joyous event was a nice juxtaposition to the carnage and bloodshed that cursed this room for generations. Today, the castle is still privately owned by the Ryans. While you cannot stay overnight in Lep Castle, there are plenty of hotels in the vicinity, and Sean Ryan welcomes fascinated tourists who want to experience the grounds firsthand. Mr. Ryan has even been known to open his doors to visitors and grant them a private tour of Lep Castle. Did the secret rapture doctrine originate? The secret pre-tribulation doctrine is not found in the Bible. So where and when did it originate? You may be surprised to learn that it wasn't until the early or mid-1800s that there was any significant group of believers around the world that looked for a rapture of the church prior to a seven-year tribulation period. The secret rapture teaching was not taught by the early church. It was not taught by the church of the first centuries. It was not taught by the reformers. It was not taught by anyone except a couple of Roman Catholic theologians until about the year 1830. Its origins. The Roman Catholic Church had to come up with a view of prophecy to counter the historic view of prophecy that the reformers had used to identify the Church of Rome. The little horn of Daniel, chapter 7, the mouth of Revelation in chapter 13, 
and the harlot of Revelation in chapter 17. This new scheme of prophetic interpretation became known as Futurism. It was a Roman Catholic Jesuit priest named Ribera who, in the days of the Reformation, first taught that all the events in the book of Revelation were to take place literally during the three and a half years reign of the Antichrist. Later, Emmanuel Lacunza, also a Jesuit priest, built on Ribera's teachings. He spent much of his life writing a book titled The Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty. Lacunza, however, wrote under the pen name of Rabbi Ben Ezra, supposedly a learned Jew who had accepted Christ as his Savior. He did this so that the unsuspecting Protestants would accept his book, for the Protestant world then wanted nothing from a Jesuit. His book was published in 1812. Now enter the name of Edward Irving. Born in Scotland in 1792, Irving discovered Lacunza's book and fell in love with it translated it into English, and it was published in London in 1827. Then Irving began to hold Bible conferences throughout Scotland, emphasizing the coming of Jesus to rapture his church. Later, J.N. Darby was introduced to the secret rapture doctrine by the Irvinites. The Irvinites were the followers of Edward Irvin. They also introduced to him the famous book by Rabbi Ben Ezra, which is, if you recall, the pen name for the Jesuit priest Emmanuel Lacunza. Darby was himself a prolific writer, and from that time a constant stream of propaganda came from his pen. His writings on biblical subjects number over 30 volumes of 600 pages each. Darby developed and organized futurism into a system of prophetic teachings called dispensationalism. The secret rapture teaching was introduced into the United States and Canada between the 1840s and 1870s. A Congregationalist preacher by the name of C.I. Schofield came under the influence of Darby and the Plymouth Brethren. Schofield became a strong promoter of the teaching that had been promulgated by Darby, whom he considered, quote, the most profound Bible student of modern times, unquote. Schofield incorporated this teaching into his Schofield Reference Bible. Three million copies were published in the first 50 years. Through this Bible, Schofield shrewdly carried the teaching of the secret rapture into the very heart of evangelism. Many of your modern Baptist pastors rely heavily upon Schofield. There is one final link in the chain of development and spread of the rapture theory that should be mentioned in passing. Schofield and Darby and Louis D. L. Moody. Moody was influential in the early Pentecostal movement. How, you may ask? The Assemblies of God are today by far the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. In 1914, they ordered their Sunday school and study materials from the Moody Press. So the Assemblies of God believed what the Moody Bible Institute taught which included the secret rapture. And so it is today. Great numbers of churches have discarded the historic teaching of the church concerning prophecy and have replaced it with a concept invented merely to deceive.